Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another Historical Humans Reacts and on today's episode we have an ancient astronomical observatory located in Kafr al-Sheikh. Al -Sheikh. Um, Honestly, yeah. yeah, that's probably about as close as we're going to get. Egypt, it's in Egypt. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, it is the Tel el Fara archaeological site. Uh, and uh, basically, there is uh, a observatory from 2,600 years ago or so, 25, 2,600 years, uh, that has been under excavation for the last seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're finally getting reports out about it now, because uh, that is how long it takes um, a lot of this stuff to cycle through from the, uh, the shovel to the public. And uh, it's a it's a fairly exciting find, um, not the least of which because the uh, the observatory in question was constructed by the twenty sixth dynasty, which is the last time an Egyptian is pharaoh of Egypt. You're telling me Cleopatra was an Egyptian? Oh, well, that's a was fight. <laughs> There's a real was, fight with that one. He was. At, she was ethnically Greek. We have the family beanstalk that she is descended I, from to prove it. No, hold on. There is, there is technically no proof of that Cleopatra's mother wasn't Egyptian. So you're saying there's plausible deniability that she could have been Egyptian, but you're not saying she was Egyptian. Yeah, but effectively... Uh, yeah. But she did speak Egyptian. Yeah. Okay, she which learned was, the language. Nice. Which was pretty rare for uh, the Ptolemaic dynasty. But, but she also learned like five other languages. So she was yeah. smart, except she fell in love with Mark Antony. Yeah. But anyway, like what is referred to with the twenty sixth dynasty being the last, uh, you know, native dynasty is the simple fact that it's it's founder and its uh, rulers are all Egyptian. After this dynasty, the rule of Egypt becomes the Persians, and then you have uh, the Ptolemaic Greeks, and then you have the Romans, who really just be Romans. <laughs> yeah. And so Always the Romans. This is, this is the last time you have a, you know, purely indigenous dynasty. It's also kind of interesting because where this is located is between Tali, which is Bulbatine, and uh, Thermotheic, which is Sibeniac. Oh, I don't know how to say that word. But it's located between two branches of the Nile River and a few uh, kilometers north of the east-west Butic River, which is just short of the Butic Lake. And it's a city with a ceremonial center in dedication to the goddess Wajet, the Ma the matron and protector of Egypt. And uh, since 2017, archaeologists have been working and excavating the remains of the Buto Temple, where recently they uncovered an ancient astronomical observatory from the 6th century BC. So, wow, that's pretty pretty spicy. That's what, 600 BC? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Six, it would be 500 BC. It would be the 500s there. Okay, so, you know, yeah. 2,500 years ago, roughly. Yeah. Pretty, pretty old. Pretty old, if I must say so myself. And these were definitely very important places because you're there, like, gods are associated with certain constellations and stars. Yeah, and and the thing, too, is, like, I'm fairly certain Wajet is arguably the oldest god of the Egyptian pantheon in terms of how long she was worshipped. Um... To the point that um, I believe there has been a little bit talk of that she was a precursor to Ra, who himself was a precursor to Amun, who it set, who himself is a precursor to Amun Ra. And it's like there's there's a lot of things like original protector sun god, maybe a yes. little bit of a question mark there. But Wajet does go back to pre dynastic Egypt. She does go back the full, like, 10,000 years of Egyptian history. 
Yeah, and uh, astronomers in this time were some of the most important people in the society, and they were extremely skilled because what they would do is they would track and observe the stars, tracking the uh, conjunctions and risings of the sun, moon, and planets. They would monitor the lunar phases, and they would also help establish dates of religious festivals and determine the hours of the night. So they would really keep track of a lot of things. They were the original timekeepers. They were uh, closely tied with the church, as you mentioned. I mean, they had a lot of function in this time. And honestly, it's a great skill. Yeah. Because you read the stars, you can you basically have a free calendar ahead of you. Free clock yeah. as well. Because these are, not only is this like important for like crops, but you can also probably try to make predictions about um when the annual flooding is going to start flooding wet seasons uh you can also uh, yeah you can you can do quite a bit and one of the things too with with this is uh this observatory is fairly extensive it is uh currently the largest uh site that we have access to for understanding these uh, astrology and astronomy, these various you know science and religious practices that are kind of merged together at this time in human history, this is the largest site we have for understanding all of that, which makes it huge because it is very detailed in and, what it has. And what they found was they found the observatory, which was an L-shaped central hall constructed from mud brick. And resembling pylon entrances of ancient Greek te or ancient Egyptian, not Greek, sorry, Egyptian yeah, temples. Egyptian temples yeah. So, like I said, they're very tied with the faith, and had a stone platform adorned adorned with gravings that depict the astronomical alignments of sunrise and sunset throughout the seasons. Like I said, they would use it for timekeeping, and then yeah. even on the inside, archaeologists found an inclined stun sun an inclined stone sundial known as a shadow clock, which indicated time by using a light spot or shadow cast by the position of the sun. So they were timekeepers. They keep track of time everything. Yeah, I do, I do like the name for this particular version as shadow clock, because that just sounds so much more fun than sundial. A little bit more <laughs> yeah. obvious, yeah. Yeah, because like your basic sundial is basically, you know, you can stick a stick in the ground and watch the shadow move around the stick. You can, and have you a, can and, stick your hand or finger up in the air yeah, and watch it. And, and have a permanent sundial that doesn't move. A shadow clock actually lets you have the sun shoot a beam in Minds of Moria style, <laughs> and then mark that as it moves around the room. Yeah, and they found some uh, other things too, different artifacts, including a statue of the um, 26th Dynasty, a Merquette measuring tool, uh, various religious items, pottery related to daily life and ritual, and yeah it's like you said it's one of the largest examples it's kind of cool kind of a neat little insight here and you know we hear a lot about egyptian temples but this is something kind of ancillary to that that's equally as interesting in my mind but yeah i think this is a great point actually for us to wrap up for today's episode thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed let us know down below and we'll see you in the next one